Hi, Facebook. How are you? It's Dr. Emily, founder of the Evidence-Based Fitness Academy, podiatrist, human movement specialist, and uh, barefoot guru, I guess we could call that. So I wanted to do a quick Facebook Live video based on a post that I did last week. I had a x-ray that I posted on Instagram and on Facebook, and it was an x-ray of my foot, and my foot was in a loafer and just a traditional loafer not this one I'll show you these x-rays soon but think like kind of a basic shoe that a lot of people are wearing to work that's typically what I wear to work when I'm seeing patients and I'm not wearing my Vibrams and then the other foot was barefoot and what I was showing I did not expect to have such an overwhelming response but I did and um, it was awesome to see the number of shares I think there were over 200 shares um, obviously likes and comments and things like that that really helps people um, start to think about the impact of our shoes and what's so funny is that because our foot is in the shoe we don't really know what's going on so we don't really know how cramped our digits are in the shoe and so you actually see an x-ray and then you're like oh man that's actually a lot of restriction that the shoe is placing on the digits and the forefoot now why this is so important is that forefoot pathology is one of the most common i'd probably argue that forefoot pathology is actually more common than rear foot pathology for what we see in a typical podiatry's a podiatrist office especially here in new york when i see so many patients who are walking everywhere so one of the most common forefoot pathology that we see is a neuroma and the fascial integration, I usually explain to my patients that the fascial integration in between the digits and in between the metatarsal heads is like a spider web. And I wish I had a picture to show you. I will do another video to show you this spider web. So everything is kind of branching out and connecting to each other. There's nerves running through there. There's arteries, there's veins, there's tendons, there's ligaments, there's different fascial attachments, there's capsule, there's retina. So it's a, it's a whole hot mess under there. And when you start to restrict it, you obviously start to get pulling on the different nerves in the front of the foot. This can definitely lead to neuromas, but it can also lead to stump neuromas and neuroma type pain that's very, very difficult to treat. So in that picture that I had posted is I had said that when we push off, we actually release two times our body weight in ground reaction forces through the front of our foot. When we walk and we strike our heel, we actually only encounter one time our body weight. So you have one times your body weight coming in when you strike your calcaneus, and then when you push off of your forefoot through your lever or your MPJs, you're actually releasing twice your body weight. So figure your 130 pounds. You're releasing 230 pounds of force so sorry, I had a phone call. Those small bones have to be able to splay to be able to take out that much force. So I'm gonna show you a couple more x-rays that I took, and then I have a special x-ray for Jesse of Freak Feet because she wanted to see a specific angle. So this is the picture that I had posted last week. This is my foot, so you're not violating any sort of hip or anything. This is me in a loafer. You can see how crunched up I am. You can see how the digits are contracted. When I push off, even though this is a loose leather shoe, I'm still getting restrictions. So if you just look at that, you can kind of guess which foot you would probably be more functional in. I'm gonna show you another x-ray that I just took. And this is another shoe. So the picture on the left is that black loafer that I had just showed you. Shoe that I lost. This shoe, again, standard loafer, you can see how that's actually restricting me quite more. This right here is just that metallic plate that's on top of the shoe, so just ignore that. But you can see how crunched up the digits are. Here, the picture on the right is me in a Vibram. That's actually me in these. So you can see that that picture on the right looks much friendlier. You can see the splay, which is great. You can see that the digits are a great in alignment. We have no crunching, and this is going to allow the appropriate Four foot splay. I'm going to show you one more picture. This is pushing off. Now the point in gait, again, that you have most of the forces going through the foot is going to be during the push off or propulsion position. So this is me, or this is essentially you in a high heel position. So this on the left is me in that black loafer. 
and you can see how everything stays very crunched up and constricted. This is exactly how you get an aromas because you start to pinch. You're going to pinch that tissue and the nerves in between these metatarsal heads when you roll through the push off phase. This is me in the Vibram in that same push off position. I'm doing a bilateral heel raise here. You can see that the digits are able to stay straight. They stay lengthened. They stay nice and spaced. And then you can see across here that we have a nice wide splaying of the forefoot. So we are getting appropriate splay. So, you may not have an x-ray machine where you are or where you work. You may not have access to see how constricted your feet are in your shoes. However, this gives you a general idea of how a loafer, I had two different types of loafers that I often wear to the office, a barefoot, and then my Vibrams. So, we know that the Vibrams are often associated as your barefoot shoe. You can see radiographically that it is matching how your foot is going to move barefoot. We know that there's many benefits of the foot from a neuromuscular perspective when the shoe will mimic barefoot, but also think of it from a biomechanical and just a structural. How much constriction are you putting on that foot? I hope that this helps. I hope this helps you think twice about the shoes that you're using. I will be posting these x-rays on Facebook and social media. So if you want to share them with any of your clients or patients, athletes who might be a little bit hesitant to get into more barefoot shoes or are curious and are maybe like, I know my shoes are doing something. This will help them see how much our shoes actually constrict our feet. I hope you enjoyed. Remember, stay barefoot strong and I will see you again very soon. Take care.